out to our Facebook. Amen. We're so excited about our series on Taming the Tongue. And just before we get started tonight, we want to give you a moment. If you could just post or share or tag, let somebody know that we're going into the Word of God. And we'll be teaching tonight out of our book that we've been teaching from entitled 30 Days to Tame Your Tongue. What you say and don't say will improve your relationships. It's not just what you say, but it's also what you don't say. Amen? Amen. Amen. We want to... I mean, even if you don't have the book and you're viewing with us, you're free, of course. We'd love for you to take notes and follow along with us. But we have a subject tonight that I believe is provocative. It's something that we need to talk about, especially in the church of today. Is that right? Yeah. So again, tonight we're going to be covering um, day 22 out of the book, and it is called The Cursing Tongue. And so just before we get ready to read out of the book as well as our teaching, for tonight, I want to ask you guys to get your Bibles. And the first uh, scripture that we're going to tonight is in Matthew chapter 26. And we're going to be reading quite a few verses out of Matthew. So if you're watching uh, by way of Facebook or Periscope, please get your Bible. We want to show you some of the very origin in the Word of God. What made someone curse in the scripture? And what was it okay or was it wrong? So we're going to look and show you what the Word of God says as it relates to the subject, and we're going into the Word of God. All right? Amen. Amen. Uh, just before we begin our reading for tonight, I just want to remind everyone that's viewing by way of uh, Facebook and Periscope uh, that we have a prayer conference coming up uh, August the 30th through September the 2nd. We'll be at the Weston Lombard Hotel. We'll be, amen, seeking the face of God, praying, seeking God, uh, reaching out to the Lord in prayer for our fellow man. We'll be going through deliverance. We'll be taking one another through deliverance and praying for one another. We're going to be encouraging one another, strengthening one another. It's a time of fellowship, a time of unity. Amen. God has blessed us to have registered guests from all over the country. People are coming from several states around the nation. And we are incredibly excited about what God is going to do. If you're not registered to be a part of our prayer conference, I want to look at you tonight and tell you, listen, log on to AngieWayMinistries.com and register right now for our prayer conference. All of our evening services are free, open to the public. Listen, you are free to come and pray with us and to receive from the hand of God. This year's theme is Even Me, Lord, Even Me. I don't know about you, but I tell you, when you get into the presence of God and you cry out to Him, you can tell Him everything. Hallelujah. You can cry out to Him about every trial, every test, every storm, and war, and God will answer and He'll hear your prayers. Somebody give God a wonderful praise as we go into our lesson on tonight. Well, all of our guest speakers, by the way, are all listed on our website, and you can go and see more about Bishop Blue and Bishop uh, James Nelson and the Nelson Brothers and all of the Ray Girls. And I would like to just make mention of this, that at the end of each conference, we ask our guests what is it that, you know, that they would love to see in our next conference, and you all won't believe this, but by popular demand, they want to hear more from the Ray Sisters. They want to hear from Cheryl, they want to hear from Denise, and from Tanya in the Word of God. So this year, you all are going to hear those girls go forth in the Holy Ghost. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I love my sisters so much. I've been asking the Lord, Lord, please bless my sisters. They are such an enormous blessing unto me. Amen. All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Again, tonight our teaching is about the cursing tongue. And so what I want to do first is I want to go to our key scriptures for tonight, and they are found in the book of James, in the book of James chapter 3 and verse 10. Um, the Bible says of the cursing tongue, we're going to be talking about uh, what does the scripture say? What does God's word, what is it that as a Christian, as a saint of God, as a person who is naming the name of Jesus, how should we conduct ourselves? What words should we use? What words should we say? And what words?
word should we not say as a born again Christian? Somebody say amen. Amen. James chapter 3 and verse 10 says, Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. Amen. It should not so be. So we have to go to the word of God and see that these things are not so to be. And we realize that as it relates to this word cursing, we see that cursing is the use of profane or obscene words. Cursing is oftentimes considered obscene because it is a, it's disgusting to the senses. And it contains language regarded as unpolite and taboo. And so as we look at the word of God, we see that James, uh, the word of God is teaching us here that it should not be that a child of God or a brethren is what it was referring to, should not have blessings and cursings out of the same mouth. You know, bitter and sweet water should not come from the same fountain. And so again, we are talking tonight about uh, the Word of God. What does the Word of God say about cursing? I'd also like to take you now to the book of James chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. And this is very uh, uh, prolific. I believe that we need to get this in our arsenal. It will help you with your words. But the tongue can, what? No man tame. It is unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. And so we realize here that, you know, the Bible talks about the tongue. The tongue has to be tamed. You cannot allow whatever comes to your mind to come out of your mouth. Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We're going next to Luke. Somebody say Luke. Luke. Chapter 6 and verse 45. The Bible says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. So who brings forth that which is good? A good man out of the treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is what? That which is good. but and, and an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is what? Evil. evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. And so we realize that from the abundance of the heart, that's where your words come from. And if your heart is good, that means that good words will come out of your mouth. But if your heart is evil, if your heart is wicked, come on somebody, then that's where those words are going to emanate from. If you have wickedness in your heart, that then that's what's going to come out of your mouth. And many people have a spirit called repressed emotions the spirit of anger, the spirit of rage. And they allow these things to get deep, deep down into the treasure of your heart. And then when something happens, the first thing that comes out of the mouth from the abundance of the heart, what speaks? The mouth speaks. So you, that is an indication that evil has gotten into the heart. And that's why it is so imperative as a child of God to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, search me. Lord, try me. Lord, if there be any wicked way in me, take it out of my heart. Take it out. Lord, I don't want to have a stony heart. I don't want to have an evil heart. I don't, Lord, I don't want to have a heart that's not pleasing unto you, but I want a contrite heart and a broken heart and a broken spirit. The Bible says that God will not despise. Amen? Amen. So I know this is a subject that is quite daunting for some people because they feel like there's absolutely positively nothing wrong with letting everything that come to your mind come out of your mouth. But what we've learned in the word of God is that the Bible says it should not be. Amen? Amen. Let me give you another story out of the word of God that I believe will help you understand the negativity that is associated with cursing. And who we going to talk about in order to bring this message to you? His name is Peter. Somebody say, oh, Peter. Oh, Peter. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 26.
6 and verse number 74. Again, Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 34. 34, excuse me. We're doing 33 and 34 first. And then we're going to go to, um, to 69 through 75. And so the Bible says, amen, and this is in Matthew, and I need you all to read along with me. Matthew 26 and verse 33 says, Peter answered and said unto him. This is Peter talking to Jesus, um, who, who had just said to Jesus, amen, that he loved him and that he would, you know, basically he would stay with him. But the Bible says, Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I not never be offended. So let's talk. This is a discussion between Jesus and Peter. Amen. And this is when, amen, the time that Jesus Christ was being betrayed. He was being taken away, being arrested. All of these things were happening up to Jesus. But Peter and Jesus had a conversation. And what did Jesus say to Peter after his comment that I'm not going to be offended and that I'm going to, uh, in other words, I'm going to be with you. Verse 34, what does it say? Jesus, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee that this night before the cock crow Thou shalt deny me thrice. So Jesus heard the words coming out of Peter's mouth. In other words, I'm going to be with you, Jesus. I'm going to stand by you. Amen. But after Jesus Christ amen, began to go through his one of his darkest hours, the Bible says in verse 69, are you all there? The Bible says, now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. Now remember, this is a child, a little girl, who saw that, that Peter had been walking with Jesus as one of his disciples. But after trouble came in the life of Christ and arrest and being pulled aside, Peter began to back away from Jesus to deny him. But Jesus, it wasn't surprising to him. Why? Because he told them what was all, he already knew what was going to happen. But what did he say? He said that before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And so the verse 69 says, let's read it again together. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, what did he say? I know not what thou sayest. And so here it is. It starts right here. He begins to deny that he was a disciple, deny that he walked with Christ, deny that what they were saying was true. Is that right? Yeah. The verse number 71, and I need y'all to come on, let's read it strong. And when he was gone out into the porch, Another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, y'all hear that second time. And again, he denied with an oath. All right, let's talk for a minute. He did it with a swear, with an oath. That what? I, come on. I do not know the man. So let's watch what was happening in the life of Peter. He began to deny the Lord. He tried to distance himself from him. He began to tell the damsel and all that were around him that I'm not with him. He became, uh, he even denied it with an oath, with a curse. He denied it. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. Let's keep reading. Go on. And after, and after a while came unto him they that stood by. And said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them. For thy what? Thy speech betrayed thee. And so let us look at the reaction, at the response, when he was confronted again, that you are with Christ, you know Jesus of Nazareth, you're one of those disciples, your speech betrays you. You see, you can't be a saved, sanctified, born-again Christian on your job and say that you're living a holy and a godly and a right 
righteous life on Sunday, but all week long you're cursing and speaking out with four-letter words and mad and angry and swearing and cursing and still name the name of Christ. Because it's a contradiction. And that's why many people feel like so many Christians are hypocrites. Because they say they're Christians, but they can out cuss some of the sailors out there. Amen. The Bible says it should not be so. Amen. It should not be named among a child of God. Is that right? Amen. And so let's look at verse number 74. The Bible says, then began he to what? He began to curse and to swear. and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Verse 75. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out. And what did he do? He wept bitterly. Because he knew that he had betrayed his master, betrayed his savior. But what was it that made him curse? He did not want to be associated with Jesus at that moment. He was trying to distance himself, to minimize his role, and to disassociate himself from Jesus Christ. I'm telling you all, if you start cussing everybody out, what are you actually doing? You are disassociating yourself with the Savior that you say you serve. Okay. Amen. I'm just telling you what the Word of God said. You can't justify it. Look at why Peter was cussing. And he was cussing and swearing. Why? Because he did not want to be named as a Christian or a disciple at that moment. And so we need to deal with the core. We need to deal with the root of profanity. Y'all still there? Yes. All right, let's go to the book for a moment. Praise the Lord. We're just going to read out of the first, the very first page, the, the cursing tongue. And when you all have it, would you just kindly say amen? Amen. 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 Uh, the, the scripture says, blessings out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things ought not to be so. Now let's read a little bit of the first chapter. Y'all, let's read it with strength. You ready? Yeah. Evie, an avowed Christian, faithfully attends prayer service, visits the shut-ins, fasts for extended periods, and goes through all of the motions of being a Christian. Read. Four-letter words in her conversation. Come on, let's read. Mm -hmm. Confronted her about her use of non-glorifying expressions. She responded, these words are in the Bible. I have heard others snicker about her hypocrisy behind her back. Why does Evie use expletives as freely as she drinks water? Because she has not allowed the Holy Spirit to tame her tongue. Keep reading. James, the brother of Jesus, explained it this way. Using, no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father. And with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Let's keep going. Using profanic, profane, obscene, or vulgar language is unbecoming to a child of God. Stop right there. Using profanity, cursing, obscenities, it is not becoming unto a child of God. And I want to share with you all this, that profanity is also socially offensive. It's a socially offensive language, which also may be called swear words, curse words, cuss words, bad language, strong language, offensive language, crude language, coarse, foul, bad, bad mouth, blasphemous, vulgar, lewd, choice words and expletives. The use of such language is called swearing and cursing. Amen. So when people have all of these unpolite and rude comments, what I found in our study is that it shows that a person has debasement 
of and D E B A S E the debasement of someone or something or shows intense emotions. Do you know that some people use profanity because they don't have intelligence? Amen. 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 Some people don't have a vocabulary to express themselves and they just curse and use profanities. But what is the solution to that? You got to learn something. Amen. You got to learn how to express yourself without cursing people out and swearing and blaspheming. And you know, people are nowadays in the church in the house of God trying to justify it and try to act like there's nothing wrong with it because they say everybody is doing it, but the devil is alive. Everybody is not cussing everybody out every few minutes on their job. It's just like the lady that we read about. She was a poor witness. And let me tell you what happens. When you curse people out on your job and you say you're a Christian, and I'm telling you, your co-workers will say it for me. They will say this to you. I thought you were a Christian. Come on now. Come on. Why do they say that? Because the expectation is if you are a born-again believer, you're supposed to be following after Jesus Christ and striving to be like Jesus. So you can't keep cussing everybody out and then go witness to them tomorrow. Why? Because when you curse people out, you lose your witness. You lose it. They lose all respect for you. And they're all the preaching, teaching, praying, prophesying. You've been doing up until that moment. They begin to put you in a category like you just like everybody else. Oh, can I talk to y'all tonight? Amen. So let me show you all that there are certain kinds of uh, swearing that's even more terrible than what we've been reading about. There is a swearing called, say it with me, abusive swearing. Abusive swearing. Abusive swearing is intended to offend, to intimidate, to otherwise cause emotional or psychological harm. And so, you know, you see sometimes, if you're walking in the store, and I actually saw this happen very recently, there was an adult woman who was walking with a little girl. And the little girl was following her, but she was too far back from her. And she turned around and started cussing the child out and telling her to hurry up, and she was sick of her, and she was getting on her nerves. And so abusive swearing actually tears down the value of that child. It tears down their self-worth. It makes them angry. And when somebody keeps cussing with abusive swearing over and over, year after year, it makes the child angry. I'm just telling you. And that's why a lot of children grow up and into their teenage years, they start acting out and acting ugly and cussing everybody out because that's what they have seen and heard. Amen? Are y'all with me tonight? Yeah. All right, there's another topic called cathartic swearing. Cathartic swearing is using in response to pain or misfortune. People that curse because something happened, because they feel pity or feel fear. But if you're a child of God, you've got to let the Lord help you feel your life, feel your heart with, with God's word. And that's what's going to come. Listen, y'all. You feel your, your spirit with the word of God, and the word of God is going to come out. Can I just give one amen? Amen. Then there's something called emphatic swearing. And it's intended to draw attention to what is considered to be worth paying attention to. You don't have to cuss everybody out in order to get a point across. You don't have to get angry. You use the right words and the right terminology and you still will get results. But the people of the world, that's how they deal with things. I'm talking to the Christian. I'm not talking to the sinner man because the sinner man does not follow after the dictates of Jesus Christ. But if you are a Christian, come on Peter, if you are a born again Christian, when you cuss and use those four letter words, you are disassociating yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe you need to ask God, Lord, take it out of my heart. That's where it comes from. James told us that from the abundance of the what? The mouth speaking. And I'll tell you all something else. Some people have a stronghold. It's a spirit that comes from, from things they've been through in life. Some of them have the emphatic swearing, the cathartic swearing, the abusive swearing. Some have idiomatic swearing. And that's when you, uh, for no particular purpose, 
words whatsoever, but as a sign that the conversation or the relationship between the speaker and the listener is informal. Some people use idiomatic swear. They just cuss all day and all night. But what it's a reflection of, it's negative. There is nothing positive in the word of God about cursing. Amen. Amen. I'm telling y'all what the scripture says. Praise the Lord. And I see in our the day we're living in now that people are, their, their attitudes are changing. They feel like everybody doing everything, so you might as well just, you know, do what everybody else is doing. But God got a remnant. Yeah. God's got a people. Can I just see the hands and do that? Want to be right with God. I want people that don't care and don't want to be right, don't want to hear this teaching. But I'm talking to people that know that you have given place to the enemy. You have given place to the spirit of anger, to repressed emotions, to pushing things down year after year, using profanity when you're not in the presence of your brothers and sisters in Christ. But tonight, if you want to be delivered, God will set you free. I believe that the power of God will set free and arrest the spirit of profanity and the spirit of swearing and anger. You know, we were in a deliverance service one night, and there was a precious sister in Christ who had been through so many things in her life. She had been through loss, through devastation, and she was receiving prayer. And the spirit of profanity manifested in her in the service. And as those spirits came out, they came out cussing. But guess what Dr. Ray said? She said, say to the Lord God, rebuke you. I command you all of the anger, all of the rage, all of the repressed emotion, all of the things of the past. I command you to loose her and let her go. I want you to know she got delivered. It's a spirit. Come on, talk to me again. A spirit called profanity. Anger, rage. Come on. And what does it stem from? The Bible says it come out of that heart. And the Bible teaches us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. Are y'all still all right? Yeah. Amen. So we realize tonight, and as we talk about Peter, Peter was cursing and swearing. And his whole goal was to disassociate himself with the Lord Jesus Christ. But the problem with the Christians today is you can't act out like that and then jump back into your spiritual zone. Oh, yeah. Uh, some of y'all want to cuss everybody out and then you want to pray for folk and wonder why they won't receive your prayer. They're like, yeah, man, right. Yes, yes, sister, please. You know what I'm saying? Because you have lost the respect of your peers by committing this particular offense. Somebody say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right, let's keep our, uh, our study going out of the next page. Are y'all still there? Yeah. Amen. We're going now to uh, the, the second paragraph where it says, while I wholeheartedly believe that profane words should not come out of my mouth, I often find myself thinking, though not saying. And so let's talk about that. Y'all, can we be real tonight? Amen. Amen. You do not have to say everything that comes to your mind. Amen. Some thoughts come to your mind because of a, a memory recall. You might see something that you saw when you were 10, ten years ago that might cause your mind to remember things. But you do not have to let what comes to your thoughts come out of your mouth. The Bible says, amen, that evil communication corrupt good manners. So if you're communicating with somebody that's constantly cussing and constantly evil, you have to cover your mind in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Come on, somebody. And when somebody do something to you, if the thought comes to your mind, even though it comes to your thought pattern, you don't have to sit there and think about it. I've seen some of y'all, though. I've seen y'all. Here y'all go. If I wasn't saved, <laughs> you should have caught me five years ago before I came to Jesus. Because if I wasn't saved, I would just let you have it right now. That's that old nature that want to stay alive. That old man that want to live. That cussing demon that want to come out of your mouth. But you got to take dominion over it and refuse to let a corrupt word come out of your mouth. It might come to your mouth, but the Bible says in Corinthians, casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And what? Come on, we're talking word. And bring into captivity every thought. Come on. To the obedience of Christ. That means a thought might hit your mind. But what you gonna do? You gonna 
will go to the word of God and say my mind is renewed by God's word. I'm not going to bow myself down to a level of folk that's low life and cussing and swearing and acting a fool. Come on somebody. You are a child of God. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. You should be held to a higher standard. Yeah, folk won't make you mad. But you better learn That feels justified 
in their anger and holding on to grudges year after year, month after month, day after day. Unforgiveness works along with bitterness. Bitterness works along with anger. Anger works along with rage. And if you allow those spirits to stay in you, the Bible says it's one that's a, a coming from a good heart and one that's coming from a what? Evil heart. So you've got to make sure that you're not giving any place because the Bible says, but the tongue, no man can tame it. It's full of unruly evil, full of what? Deadly poison. You know, the Bible says in Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 6, that jealousy, the Bible says it's cruel as the grave. Some people are just jealous hearted. They're jealous of what they don't have, jealous of what they think you have, and a lot of times jealousy is another root issue. Where is it coming from, saints? It's coming out of their heart. So that's why we see, where is it coming from? All of this cursing and all of this evil, it's coming out of the heart. And the only way to get delivered is to acknowledge it. And to be honest and say, God, take it out of my thoughts. Take it out of my heart. Lord, take out revenge. Take out retaliation. Take out the desire to get people back. Come on, church. Come on. Because when people do people wrong, a lot of times, the first reaction of the flesh is to get back at them. I know y'all are quiet on that. Amen. But we've got to give up the ground. Tell your neighbor, give up the ground. Don't allow those spirits to manifest in your life. I want to give God the glory for the viewers we have right now viewing our live Facebook uh, concerning claiming the time. Praise the Lord. Let's thank God for all of the states that have been covered and the cities that we have people watching in Jesus' mighty name. All right. All right, we're almost done. Let's keep going. We got a few more words left. Let's read now out of the last paragraph on page 95. It says, understanding that profanity resides in the heart helps us to reject the idea that a curse word slipped out of our mouth. The reality is, come on y'all, that it slipped out of where? It didn't just come out of your mouth, it came out of your heart. And out of the heart proceeded the issues of life. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The power of death and life are in the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. We gotta bless the Lord with this mouth. Come on, somebody. We gotta praise him with this mouth. And James is saying that bitter and sweet water, excuse me, James is saying that these things ought not be. That we're saying blessings and curses at the same time. But tell the neighbor, I'm going in my heart tonight in prayer and ask God to take it out of my heart. Take it out. Do you know that deliverance is real? If you need deliverance in this area, I say to you tonight to be honest and to confess it. Lord, this is an area that I struggle with. Lord, this is an area where the enemy keeps fighting in my mind. Lord, this is an area that I've given pledge to the enemy in the past. But God, I repent right now. I turn away from it. I don't want to be like Peter. I don't want to disassociate myself from Christ by cussing and swearing. But I want to live so, God, that you can use me and that you can use my life in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you something that cursing grieves the Holy Spirit. That cursing grieves the heart of God. Cursing grieves the Spirit of the Lord. And let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sensitive. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want him to leave me. I don't want the Holy Spirit to leave me. I don't, I don't want him to ever leave me or to ever go away. So it's God, I don't want to give any place to the enemy. I want to shut this door. Lord, I repent. Lord, I give up the ground. Lord, I confess it. And the next time you feel that spirit of anger, that spirit of rage, that spirit of profanity, what you going to do? You're going to go to Corinthians. Come on, come on. Corinthians going to come to your mind. Casting down imaginations. Every hot thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You got to go over to the song and say, uh-uh, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall forever and continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us do what? Exalt his name together. We can't exalt God and cuss folk out the next day. Come on somebody. We're going to shut the door to the spirit of profanity and we're going to get to the root of it. Come on. Let the Lord make the axe at the root of the tree and cut it up. Come on. Cut it up. Break it up. Pour it out in the name of Jesus. Somebody clap your hands. I'm almost done. Just a few moments left. Hallelujah.
was saying, I see the stronghold or the spirit of profanity or whatever the stronghold was. And in deliverance, she would tell us, I want you to ask the Lord to let the angels of the Lord, hallelujah, bring swords of fire and cut, cut, cut and sever and destroy every root. Come on, somebody. You got to get the root out of there. You can't just deal with the surface, but you got to go to the root. Every spirit of anger, every spirit of retaliation, every spirit of rage, every spirit of reacting when you feel disrespected. That's when you're going to get real deliverance. And you're going to have to go in the Holy Ghost and say, God, I apply the blood to my mind. I apply the blood of Jesus to my heart. I apply the blood to my soul. And I drive out. Come on, somebody. And I believe my life in the name of Jesus. I command you to go now. Every spirit of profanity, every curse word, every idiomatic word. Come on here. I drive it out in the name of Jesus. I come against rudeness and being impolite and being offensive. I will say what thus saith the Lord. I want to tell you all something that if you allow that thing to stay in your mind, it's going to come out of your mouth. If you allow it, you keep on entertaining the thought, it's going to come out of your mouth. Because guess what? It's getting down in that heart. It's getting down in the heart. I talk about it all the time. One of the church mothers that moved down to Kentucky said to me one day, she said, she said, Kim, you're going to be a pastor now. She said, I want to tell you something. She said, she said, forgive quickly. She said, hurry up. Forgive quickly. Don't let it get in your heart. When folks say things about you, when they do things to you, when they walk away and you haven't done nothing to them, she said, forgive quickly. Say to God, tell your neighbor, don't let it get in your heart. Don't let it get in your heart. Come on, tell them, move quickly. Renounce it. Reject it. Turn away from it. Repent from it. Come on. And when you repent and when you confess it, let me tell you, when you expose that devil, the tempter's power. It's broken. He can't hold your past over you. He can't hold your own sins over you. He can't hold what you ever did over you because you have confessed it and you have repented and you have been washed. You have been cleansed. You have been sanctified. You have been justified by the blood of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and you get ready to go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, I've got a few scriptures. Can y'all go fast with me? Colossians 3 and 8 says, But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. He said, put off these things. Tell somebody, put it off. Put it off. Ephesians 5 and 3 says, But fornication and uncleanness or covetousness let it not be made among you as becoming saints. Amen? Amen? Ephesians 5 and 4. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather give, giving thanks. I love the new international version of Ephesians 5 and 4. It says, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather giving thanks. Saints of God, we have exposed the spirit of profanity, and we have commanded this spirit to loose God's people in Jesus' name. There are some people that actually don't want to be that way. There are some people that have never heard the truth or the answer as to how to get free from something. But tonight we see that all of these things come from the heart. Come on, somebody. And what comes from the heart, amen, is going to come out of the mouth. I want to thank God for a precious sister watching on Facebook who admitted that when she is angry that she's been cursing really bad. But tonight she has repented. Amen. She has repented. And she is coming against the strong man of profanity and is asking for prayer. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what this Bible teaching is all about. We just want to help somebody get free. We want to help somebody get delivered. 
I was telling you all about that sister, amen, that had a stronghold in her life, but God delivered her and took that anger out of her. Amen. Listen, one more thing we want to talk about in our conclusion is our affirmation for tonight. And our affirmation, amen, in the book it says, cursing does not proceed out of my mouth. Today, I give God full charge of my tongue. And by his grace, I will only speak words that will bring honor to his name. Saints of God, I pray tonight that God will give you a new perspective on what comes out of your mouth. That before you allow the wrong thing to come out, that you will stop and resist the devil. The Bible says if you resist them, what's going to happen? He will flee from you. So you don't have to let him run you. You can run that spirit. Come on. And listen, you can't let the little things stay. Because if you let the devil ride, he going to want to drive. Come on. You got to shut the door. Give up all the ground in Jesus' name. Let's say a prayer together right now. Give God a wonderful hand praise for our people tonight. Against God. was an attempt to disassociate himself from you, Father, Jesus, even in your darkest hour. But Lord, in Jesus' name, we renounce every spirit that causes anger and rage and profanity and swearing and foul words. Father, we take dominion over them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every Christian who has struggled in this area, but tonight is ready to give up all of the ground and to cast down those imaginations and refuse to participate in words that are grievous to the Holy Spirit. Father, tonight we lose the spirit of prayer and we lose an anointing to set the captives free in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for that person that does not want to do it anymore, that want to turn away from profanity and turn away from anger. Lord, take it out of the heart tonight. Take out the hurt. Take out the rejection. Take out the feeling of disrespect. Take out the insecurity. Take out the jealousy. Take out the retaliatory tongue. Oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, we cry out to you today and we bind the strong man of profanity. We bind the crude language and blasphemous words in the name of Jesus. God, we come against everything that is offensive in the lives of your people. God, we want to be saved. We want to be right, God. We want to be holy. We want to do what's pleasing in your sight. Wash us in your precious blood. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, you said the heart is desperately wicked and it's deceitful. Nobody can clean our hearts but you. So God, we cry out tonight. Cleanse our hearts, Father. Take everything out that's evil. Take everything out that's corrupt, Lord. We cry out to you on a Wednesday night. We cry out in Bible study. Lord, wash our hearts. Give us a heart of flesh, Lord. Give us a soft heart and a tender heart and a contrite heart and a good heart, Father, in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We bless your name and we glorify you tonight in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Somebody put your hands together and give God the praise. Glory to God to all of our viewers. Don't forget tonight to go online to NGA Ministries, amen, to find out information about the conference. We're going to be going through deliverance, and we're going to be praying that Jesus will set the captives free. Amen. It's in Lombard, Illinois, August the what? The 30th through September 2nd. Meet us at our International Intercessory Prayer Conference. I know that God is going to meet us in that place, the Western Hotel. Well, God bless you. I love you. In Jesus' name. Somebody give that.